Yes. Uh, thank you very much for this opportunity. Microphone. Briefly needed. Or required. <laughs> uh, thank you very much for this opportunity of discussion and debate. Uh, I do share what Professor Fumagalli said. It's quite impressive to say how many points in common we have when we deal with these problems and many of the issues you are debating uh, are very close or very similar to the one that the Italian legal system as well as the international legal system had to face in the establishment of its uh, sports justice system. Um, probably you have already uh, started to know in your uh, comparative efforts uh, how Italy uh, tried to establish an arbitration system uh, at the end uh, of 1998, 1999 with the new statute of Italian Living Committee and uh, the 10 years, 15 years uh, better experience of the system. Uh, I want to uh, uh, point out one element which is, in my opinion, very relevant also from a comparative uh, law perspective, which is the following. Uh, the usefulness and the practicability of arbitration largely depends on the broader understanding of what is the sports system and what is its main legal framework. I think the uh, biggest difficulty uh, we had in establishing a probably working system of arbitration in sports justice was due to the prevailing understanding of the Italian sports system as a public law system. And uh, it was this mainstream idea which, in my opinion, uh, impeded uh, and represented a huge obstacle to a very efficient functioning of the system. Because in the end, even if we try to establish uh, a well-functioning arbitration system, in the end, uh, appeal to ordinary courts, and in particular to administrative courts, uh, was still uh, undeniable. So we had a formally perfect arbitration system, but in the end, it was not the final word not even in the Italian legal system, because at the end, everybody was all the same entitled to go before uh, administrative courts in a uh, two-stage uh, uh, judgment. Uh, so uh, the efficiency and the speediness of the system was uh, largely undermined uh, by the fact that you had you uh, had to wait the judgment of the state administrative courts before having a final settlement of the dispute. And administrative courts, in most cases, refused to uh, recognize the sport arbitration system as a true arbitration system. And so we invented this distinction between uh, the form of the procedure of an arbitration, uh, which was acknowledged, and the substance of an administrative decision, even if taken in the so-called arbitral forms or procedures. So in the end, uh, the last word was uh, in the hands uh, of administrative courts. So, in this way, arbitration was not so helpful, and this is why the Italian Olympic Committee decided to change the system and to create a very sophisticated um, system of internal remedies 
with on top a very uh, powerful and respected court uh, uh, for the final judgment within uh, the sports system. And then afterwards, uh, the, the, the appeal before administrative court. So our arbitration system was in substance uh, put apart and remained a kind of interesting but failing experiment. Uh, this uh, brings me to the second uh, element of reflection of discussion, which is the following. Uh, the, the public law setting is one of the main issues which makes the difference, in my opinion, in comparing uh, systems. The second one is uh, the legal culture and more broadly the attitude uh, towards uh, sports institutions. Because he, if we have a hierarchical system or more broadly a hierarchical society, you can probably efficiently set up a system of uh, legal protection which is much more selective and which can really help uh, to ensure fairness and uh, justice without creating such a huge uh, overload for uh, internal systems as well as state courts. Uh, in Italy, uh, we may like it or dislike it, we, not, we don't have any hierarchical culture, by the opposite of probably you understood just going around the streets of Rome. So uh, we are really uh, uh, people, a country uh, which loves to have litigation in all the possible forms. So uh, for us there is uh, the opposite problem which is to channel uh, and to manage litigation and its overload. Uh, we discuss a lot uh, here in this building about uh, the arbitration clause and the idea that uh, an asymmetry would have been possible, the idea that only sports organizations were uh, obliged by the arbitration clause while the athlete was free to decide the best way was a very attractive idea for us in principle and for sure it was the most respectful of the freedom uh, of arbitration but in our system probably it would have been totally useless because uh, every uh, athlete or every uh, company, every sports private sports organization would have preferred to go before a court because this allows much great uh, mm -hmm. popularity, debate and uh, media evidence, media relevance uh, of, the, of, the, of the matter. Uh, but if it is possible uh, and it is manageable from different uh, standpoints, <coughs> from different legal culture. I do believe that uh, this uh, arrangement would be perfect in principle and it would be the most effective and respectful of individual freedom as well as all efficiency principles. Uh, anyhow, um, I do believe that we have to keep in contact and to uh, go on in this uh, discussion. We, I think, the Italian Olympic Committee, the Italian Review, and the uh, Italian universities are really happy uh, to develop this potential partnership and on sports issues as well on other very relevant issues of comparative law. So thank you very much for having been with us and. I hope to see you soon again in Rome, in Japan, during the Olympic Games and earlier and beyond. Thank you very much.